A lot of people who use Premiere Pro have stated the image looks a lot different using the Premiere Pro graphic user interface than when they play the video back using QuickTime or if they upload it to YouTube. There's a reason that happens. I wanna let people see I have an adjustment layer. I can turn it on and off. It doesn't matter if these images look too bright or too dark, as long as you can tell that this image here is a little bit darker than this image here. When I have the adjustment layer off, it should look a little bit brighter. With Premiere Pro, we can go over to the menu bar where it says edit. We can scroll down to preference. We can hit general. Where it says display color management requires GPU acceleration. If we turn this off, you're gonna see the image looks a little bit brighter. Some people could say it looks dull and chalky. Some people are gonna say when they render stuff out, that's exactly what happens. We wanna enable this. We wanna be in this type of color space. Let me enable this really quick. This is how we wanna be editing. Like I said, we wanna be in this color space. The way we can compensate for the discrepancy between what's on the graphic user interface of Premiere Pro and what you see once it's uploaded to YouTube or if you play it on a QuickTime player, we can apply a gamma correction filter to the adjustment layer to compensate. Let me disable this really quick. And I'm going to go over to a folder where I have some video clips already rendered out. The clip I'm going to play was rendered without the adjustment layer applied. Let me pause it really quick. Bring this back here. I'm gonna hit play. I'm gonna hit play. As you can tell, this looks dull and chalky compared to what's on the interface of Premiere Pro. And this is what people complain about. This is without using the adjustment layer. And you can see there's quite a big discrepancy. What I can do is I can select a clip that has the adjustment layer on. I'm gonna select the one that says 14 because I set the gamma level at 14. Let me double click it. Let me stop it right there. Let me go back over here. I'll hit play. I'll hit play over here. We can see that these images look very similar. You can switch the adjustment layer from 15, 14, you know, whatever you think is going to work best. If I click on this folder, I could click on 13. This is basically the same thing. Let me slide over here. Let me hit play. Let me hit play. Some people could think at level 13, it matches up a little bit better. I think 13, it looks a little bit too light. That's my honest opinion. I think 14 is the closest. If I go to 15, I think it almost looks a little bit too dark. Let me slide this back. Let me hit play, hit play. Some people may disagree. Some people might think level 15 looks the best. I'll let it play for just a sec. You can decide for yourself which level you think looks the best. Here, I think it looks too dark though. I can tell it's too dark. We can kind of see this a little bit. You can't really see the writing there, but that's all there really is to it. You're setting it at like level 13 or 14 and you're trying to compensate for the discrepancy between what you see on the Premiere Pro interface and what you're gonna see on QuickTime or once it's uploaded to YouTube. I am now playing those rendered clips in Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a crop filter on this particular video clip and I have a crop filter on this as well. If I turn the crop filter off, here you can see what it looks like. What I'm gonna do is this doesn't have the adjustment layer. And if I slide across here, you don't see any difference between the two different video clips. Even with this enabled, the adjustment layer affects everything, so you wouldn't see a difference. However, if I take this that does have the adjustment layer and I did render it out, you can see you can see a huge discrepancy. If I shut it off, we can still see a huge discrepancy again. 
This is with the adjustment layer, the alpha, or I mean the gamma was set at 14. This one, the gamma was set at 13. But even if I take this one here, you can still see a distinction between the two since the one is cropped. Take this out again. Once again, this doesn't have the adjustment layer. It was rendered out without it, and it matches up 100%. So when you render it out without an adjustment layer and you pop it back into Premiere Pro, it's going to look fine because it's designed to be played in that type of color space. A Windows Movie Player, QuickTime, YouTube, Vimeo, they're all going to handle that video codec differently. I want to let people know that with this adjustment layer, I'm simply using the gamma correction. However, if you wanted to go to effects and you did want to throw on the proc amp, let me turn this on. If you did want to tweak things out a little bit more, you can come in here, tweak stuff out, add a little bit more saturation, drain it to black and white, do what you want to do. You could switch the hue. You're just making minor adjustments to it to compensate for how different video players are going to handle that video codec. I want to say that Adobe does have a LUT that you can download that you're supposed to apply during the rendering process. I don't know how well it works. That being said, I would probably rather just use the adjustment layer. You could drop the gamma correction filter on it, a three-way color corrector. You could do the test renders and decide, you know, which looks the best, you know, and once you've got things to where they look, almost identical to what it looked like in the Adobe program monitor, you can save those presets. Now, I was doing a comparison between Windows Movie Player and the Adobe program monitor. If your final destination is to Vimeo or YouTube, you'd want to take the YouTube video player and make a comparison with the Adobe program monitor. There's no sense in trying to make it look great on a QuickTime player if the final destination is Vimeo or YouTube. Before I end this video, I want to show people how to create an adjustment layer. You simply go to this little icon right here where it says new item, click on it, scroll up till you see adjustment layer, select OK. This is the adjustment layer right here. Here's the one I created previously. You just drop and drag it over to the timeline stretch it out as long or short as you need it. That's all there really is to it. If you found this video helpful, you might want to subscribe to my channel.